Hello and welcome to today's session Beyond Bias, Moving the Industry into Action. My name is Fernanda de Lima Alcantara. I'm a marketing science researcher at Facebook Creative Shop. And today we're going to spend some time talking about the importance of diversity, equality, and inclusion in advertising. And since March is the Women's History Month, I'm so excited with my conversation with Madeline Dinono. She's the CEO of the Gina Davis Institute, a nonprofit organization taking the lead on advocating for gender equality across all forms of culture and media. And Facebook has partnered with the Institute to commission research and understand the current status of representation of people in advertising and opportunities of better portrayal of women and all underrepresented groups. So welcome, Madeline. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Fernanda, for having me join you. And hi, everybody out there in South by Southwest land. Excited to speak with everyone today. Yes, me too. So let's start right in talking about the research we did in 2019, because it was a global research with over a thousand ads and the analysis indicated that women characters seems to be almost on pair with male characters, accounting for approximately 45% of the screen time and 47% of the speaking time. And it looked, it looked great, right? Until we dig a little bit further and we found that some instances were a bit stereotypical actually with women being more likely to be portrayed in revealing clothes or very skinny, or even that old legacy of the empathetic mom and primary caregiver. So Madeline, what's really happening here? Well, there's two things that we look at. Who is showing up and how are they showing up? So the good news is they're showing up. Female characters are showing up and we've seen a parallel when we look at television and film in terms of parity for female lead characters in terms of screen time and speaking time. However, the second part of how are they showing up? And that's where we see a lot of these tropes and stereotypes. And to uh, frame this conversation uh, for the data that came out of this study, essentially we've got the happy housewife who is you know, dumb and sexy. You know, why is it that, you know, men are three times more likely to be shown, you know, as as angry and unhappy? You know, why is it the female character is always happy? Why is the female character two times more likely to be shown as the caretaker, shown as cooking, being in very domestic situations? You know, why are the male characters more likely to be shown as working, as actually having a job? you know, that we can, you know, recognize. Now, when it comes to the sexualization of female characters, you have to think about it. This is a really short form of storytelling. And how is it when you look at some of these numbers that female characters are 14 times more likely to be shown in revealing clothing, seven times more likely to be shown as objectified, whether it's verbal objectification or visual objectification, which means they're not even shown as a whole person, they're shown as a body part. And how is it that in a 30 second spot, they could six times be more likely to be shown as nude? This is advertising that children are exposed to, global audiences are exposed to, and it really makes you pause and think about what is the message you know, that we're sending to audiences about uh, female characters and their role in society. And at least from my experience or what I see, it looks like the marketers, they are on board with this idea of having more diverse uh, and inclusion in their advertising, but we still see this gap, right? So in your opinion, how brands can be more systematic and organized to address their own shortcomings in advertising? Well, there's a few things. It starts with uh, the ethos of the brand. And so, for example, you know, are the brand leaders and the CEOs of these corporations 
uh, mandating that uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion is an important component. Um, are they funding these types of programs? Um, most companies now have very well established chief diversity officers that have been removed from the HR CSR function and all it into business units and working side by side with marketing executives and you know their agencies. So we think we're very heartened to see that. And I think that's a very important step. When it comes to the creative process, there's a lot of touch points and a lot of interventions. Uh, number one, um, <clears throat> who is creating the brief? Who is reviewing the brief? What is the composition? What are the questions that they're asking? Because a lot of what's happening in advertising is you have a very short amount of time to uh, convey the brand essence and the sales proposition. But in terms of the delivery of who's giving the message and what is the context of how that message is delivered, that's another nuance, that's another layer. And it's really important to say, okay, based on uh, these characters, are these characters reflective, not only of the brand, but are these characters reflective of our culture? You know, for example, we know from research that, particularly in the US, that men would love to spend more time at home with their families. So why is that not reflected? Why is it that we're only showing women, you know, cooking and as the caregiver? Um, why aren't we showing uh, more male characters or even LGBTQ families? Um, taking on those kinds of, you know, roles. So, you know, those are the kind of the interventions that I think if 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 they take the brief and they look at it from an intersectional point of view, um, I think they would uh, realize a few of these things. And the other thing is, many many times the emphasis is on the protagonist. So it's a character that is speaking the most amount of dialogue. But what about the environment, the situation? You know let's put women behind the wheel. Why aren't they driving more? Um, why aren't they at sporting events? Let's show more women, particularly women 50 plus, working out and having full, um, fully rounded lives. We know that women in their 50s are the wealthiest and the healthiest in the world. Why aren't we seeing more of them you know, in commercials? So it's little things like that, that um, we believe can be really helpful along the way. And then the last thing, which is not the last thing, but is very important is, what happens when this creative brief goes off for packaging and for casting and it leaves the hands? Um, it's really important to have explicit messaging about um, inviting a, a full range of diverse characters and actors to audition to be in these spots as well. Yeah, I love everybody that you're everything that you are saying because here on Facebook, uh, we ask ourselves all the time, how can we build these ideas that help moving culture forward? And how can we spot our own biases? Uh, when we think about the creative development in particular, like the brief, the idea development, the production, we keep asking ourselves if there's any group of people that we are underserving and we could do better. And, and also the measurement side, I mean, we all know that business results are so important, but it's not just about the campaign results, it's also in the creative development, how we can get more data and, and, and be more aware of what is happening. And I think that's part of the work we did together because with this partnership, we learn, learn a lot about the casting breakdown and screen time, speaking time, and also their storyline, which is so important if we want to celebrate people, to be authentic, and to empower people, we need to have this information. And getting data and measurement is a way to keep us accountable and you know, like just measure the progress. And, and since we are start talking about measurement, Facebook Global Research also uh, indicated that diversity and inclusive representation of underrepresented groups might lead to some interesting positive results, better results in business outcomes. So um, in your opinion, what have you seen in terms of business imperative? 
So there's a few things. Uh, doing good is good for business. I think we all agree upon that. But when we look at uh, some of the data that comes out on the film side, there's a few examples that I can give you. You know, one, um, when we look at the uh, correlation between uh, diversity, you know, and box office, there's a few things we can talk about. One, um, from a Gina benchmark study, which looked at 10 years of the top 100 largest grossing theatrical movies out of the US, female-centric films generated 55% more at the box office across that 10 year period. And then when you look at diverse leads, when we look at global box office, what we've seen is that there's been a, quite a big you know, shift in terms of uh, achieving the most money at the box office. So for example, in 2007, it was about 82 million, all the way to about 183 million in 2019. So if you're not featuring diversity on screen, whether it's a small screen or a big screen, you are essentially you know, leaving out audiences and therefore it's gonna show up in, in your sales. Yeah, this is really interesting because also here we have been observing this relationship between business and representation in online campaigns. So for instance, we partner with 15 brands to develop these diverse and inclusive campaigns. And in every single one of them, we saw a lifting ad recall uh, and we partner, partner with another 10 brands to, you know, like compare uh, their single traditional representation with this new way of doing more diverse and inclusive. And, uh, and we also ran a meta-analysis from it. And we found with 90% confidence that, 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 that the diverse and inclusive representation strategy will outperform this single traditional representation. But it's not just like the data we are getting on Facebook or you with the Institute, like if you do some, you know, like open search, we can see so many examples of other companies also talking about this relationship and things like more representativeness of people and better game performance and even the correlation with stock price. So I guess uh, this is a strong indication for us that the diverse and inclusive representation of people is it can be beneficial for both brands and people. So I wonder in your opinion, how important is the advertising industry as an instrument of change and how do you think it relates to other forms of media and art? So one of the taglines of the Institute is, if she can see it, she can be it. And I'll just give you two you know, examples. Um, we had the privilege of working with uh, uh, 20th Century on um, uh, their famous show, X-Files, which had been on the air um, for many, many years. And uh, they anecdotally always felt that the character of Scully played by the marvelous Gillian Anderson led women to pursue careers in STEM. And they asked us, you know, could you validate this um, assumption that we have? And we surveyed thousands of women and girls who would have been old enough to see the show when it was on air. And we found that 63% of the women working in STEM did so because of the Gillian Anderson character and that she was their role model and encouraged them into STEM. And, you know, and, and another example I'll give um, is also from, it's a personal story for Gina. You know, she qualified for the Olympic trials in archery uh, many years ago, and her archery coach had called her and said, you know, girls' participation in archery jumped up, you know, in 2012. And if we had a live audience, we could say and ask everybody, what movies? Uh, but it was actually Brave and Hunger Games. And both of those movies came out in 2012. And what happened is girls saw, saw it and went out and bought a bow. They didn't wait. So girls' participation in archery shot up 105% in one year. So it really shows the power of you know, media you know, to, to inspire. And, and I think you know, advertising can certainly you know, take a page from that. 
Yeah, this is such a good point. And I guess similar to the film industry, the advertising industry also um, needs to ensure that we have diverse representation of people on both people building and developing the creative. And um, and I mean, I guess we could probably spend a lot of time talking about this because this topic is so dear to our hearts. But uh, we don't have much more time, so I have to ask you my final question, which would be um, based on everything we discussed here today. What would be the main takeaways or things that you know marketers should remember um, as a result of our conversation? Well, I think it's really important that they put eyes on their creative briefs in terms of the composition of the characters and um, what. How is that composition going to translate to a finished spot? So of course, there's the brand message, there's the sales message, but really examining what are these characters saying, um, not only about the product, but what is it saying about our culture? And what is the message you know, that we're, we're conveying? And I think that's another layer um, uh, that it's really important that they look at. Well, this conversation was so insightful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, the work you are doing is great. You know that Facebook's a data-driven company, so having data to tell the story, it's fundamental for us to track and measure progress. So your work is really important. Thank you, and I'm thrilled with the partnership, honestly. Well, it's an honor to be partnered with you. We're thrilled to have Facebook as a partner. And for everybody who's watching at home, uh, please go to cjane.org where you can see all of our you know, research that hopefully will be um, of help to you. Yes, don't forget to go to their website. I also want to uh, thank everybody who is watching today. Uh, I hope that this conversation was insightful to you and it kind of inspires more action around getting beyond bias and embracing diversity and inclusion in advertising. There's a lot, of mo a lot more content in our report. So if you're curious, please go to the website. You're gonna see the address on the screen and, and, let, it, and let us know if you have any feedback. So thanks again for joining us today. Bye. Bye-bye, thank you.